It had been a while since the day's lessons ended, and I went back home. But that very afternoon, I would have to pass by the school again. I leave the clinic that's next door to my school, and I decide to take a detour around the scenic route. There's a park with a small pond located behind the school, and I like to wander there from time to time. It's sloppier than you'd expect. The water is nearly dried up and has a strange hue that's extremely off-putting. That doesn't change the fact that it's quiet and welcoming here when you just want to take a peaceful stroll. As I sit in the park on a bench at the edge of the road, I flip my pen in frustration, as I'm unable to recall the words for its paper counterpart. Then, with a heavy sigh, somehow my thoughts are suddenly led astray. I still have time to go, and I, and I take a look at the place. Or rather, I still have time to go and take a look at the place the email mentioned. I remember the place not being too far away from here, and even though I know it's stupid, it still piques my interest. Ah, forget it, forget it. I said I wouldn't go. Why would I, anyways? Make a fool out of myself in front of Ziva? I don't have to prove anything to anyone. Also, also said he should be making most. Uh, we should be making the most of our time before our final exams. It's true that there isn't much time before the exams begin, and after that, I don't have any plans. But is that reason enough for anything for an anything goes attitude? <sighs> that isn't the right question. The most important thing now is to think about what I truly want to do. Without forgetting to consider the risk. In the worst case scenario, what could it be? A uh, kidnapping? Meh. I'm not important enough to be kidnapped this elaborately. And if it's just a prank, then who cares? I don't even like this town. I'll just leave once I finish high school. I don't really care how the others see me either. I'm curious to know who sent me that stupid email. <laughs> I should stop overthinking it. Oh, exactly. I should go investigate it and find the truth myself. What now, Ziva? Take that. Thrilled with the results of my monologue, I jump up and flip off a random, unsuspecting cloud. Oh, that's rude to the cloud. It's not like I actually care about the cloud's feelings, but it's obvious that I was caught up in the moment and had temporarily abandoned my own principles. What nonsense am I even? That's it! You're totally right! I have to change my attitude! To hell with everything! A huge hat flops out of nowhere, concealing a girl underneath it who then also decides to flip off an unsuspecting cloud. Uh, poor cloud. Upon closer inspection, I see that the hat, uh, the hat is a normal size or rather, I see that the hat is normal size, but the girl underneath is just is the the girl underneath it is just puny. The girl underneath it is just pu puny. Okay, she's small basically. Anyway, for no apparent reason, that shorty walks up to me and answers a question I haven't been I haven't asked haven't even asked. What am I doing here? I've been on that bench the entire time. I was drowning in sorrow until you decided to sit next to me. Naturally, I assume you're going to hit on me. In fact, I don't know why it doesn't happen more often. Um, it might be, it might be illegal. Although it's a pity that you just happened to be ugly. <laughs> it's a pity that you had just had to be so ugly. No hard feelings, but I have high standards. Well, well. I mean. You're intriguing in your own way, yeah. Is she making fun of me? It isn't good to be so forceful. First impressions aren't everything, girl. The important thing is that you aren't a pervert. You came to cheer me up. Can I go now, please? I don't know how you knew what I was thinking, but your words have inspired me. Thank you so much. Alright. I have no idea what's going on. It seems that... When I sat here, I didn't realize someone else was sitting here too, and now she thinks I was talking to her all along. That's what I get for thinking out loud. Normally, people would think you're crazy for doing so. You never expect to attract, cra uh, attract crazy people. I don't know who she is, but I need to stay calm. 
Like she's a predator. I mustn't let her smell smell my fear. Now, thinking out loud, that's well, that's technically what you do for uh for for like for Twitch streaming and YouTube let's plays, I guess. That's exactly what you do. You just talk to yourself like a crazy person, like what I'm doing right now. Anyway. Crazy, do not touch. Sniff sniff. She she's sniffing me. You smell like a good person. I think I think I'm gonna like you after all. You have a better ch a better chance than I initially thought. You should be proud of yourself. You're you're scaring me. I'll do like you said, and just enjoy the moment. My condition shouldn't be an obstacle, and overthinking it isn't gonna solve anything. Right. So it's been a pleasure finally meeting you face to face. Until next time. Thank you again. She leaves as suddenly as she appeared. I would like to say something in reply, but I'm speechless. In fact, I think. Uh, what? Did I miss something? I think I. Hmm. I think I missed something, actually. Let me. I f maybe I was just seeing things, but I felt like I I think I skipped some dialogue. Go back right right quick, yeah, you know, quick like no 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 no. Okay. Jeremy, yes, you're a predator. Thanks again. Ah. Oh. In fact, I think I peed myself a little. <laughs> what? Anyway. Tossing aside things I'd rather forget, I'm here to check this place out because of that mysterious email. I was thinking there'd be a cowboy or someone to challenge me to a duel, but nobody else is here. I should have known that, considering where I am, in an unfinished neighborhood. They started building a ton of complexes here a little less than a decade ago, but they blew the budget before finishing them. This playground is one of the few things they managed to finish, but with no one living around here, it's no wonder that it isn't popular. I can confirm that personally, since I usually pass close to this area when I visit the library, and I've never seen anyone else here before. It seems that I came here for nothing, or at least, that's what I think until I spot a leg hanging out amongst the tubes, rails, and slides. Keeping my distance, I sneak around the playground, trying to find out who the leg belongs to. And sitting there is a girl. I immediately recognize not her identity, but the gesture she's making. Between her fingers, she holds a pencil which she traces lines along a sketchbook that's propped up against her knees. While listening closely, I can hear her humming. Sometimes she rubs her pencil against her lips while in thought or looks away from the sketchbook to view her subject from another perspective. I guess she's some kind of artist. She doesn't seem to notice my presence as I, as I hide behind a tree, planning the best course of action. Alright, Karen. There's nobody around, else around here, so she must be the one who sent that email. Or at least she must somehow be involved with it. So I go out, wanting an explanation to that email. Seems easy enough. As soon as I begin to emerge from my hiding spot, I immediately jolt back behind the tree. Wait, 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 wait a second. If she's waiting for me, then why is she sketching here? She, 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 she seems too immersed in her drawing to be waiting for someone. She hasn't even looked at anything but her paper and subject. Actually, it must be difficult to see much from her vantage point. If she's waiting for me, it would make more sense to wait from where she, she can see the entrance. Another possibility is that she wants to ambush me. That accounts for why she's hidden. Then maybe she got caught up in her or but then maybe she got too caught up in her art and forgot about me. Hmm. In that case, I should try to catch her off guard. 
Why am I overthinking this anyway? I have the upper hand here. I just need to move first. I should just be friendly and give a good first impression. It'll still be a surprise attack, but not as aggressive. Okay. <laughs> okay, Detective Kirin. I stealthily, I stealthily step out of the, my hiding spot. With cat-like reflexes, I climb up the slide and grab one of the monkey bars near where I want to slide down next. I sneak behind the girl with the intention of surprising her before she can react to anything, and I raise my pistol and yell FREEZE! Gotcha! Yeah. NANI! She's gone! I fail my mission miserably and decide to survey the area just in case. When I finally notice her running out of the park, fleeing with all of her art supplies in hand. Now what do I do? I scratch my head in confusion, with no next plan of action until I gaze at the nearby garbage can. She probably hasn't yet realized that nobody comes here to empty the trash, seeing as it's filled with her scraps of paper from failed drawings. It's pretty full, so she probably comes here often. The scraps have all kinds of illustrations, clearly drawn with someone with or clearly drawn by someone with natural talent of animals and fantasy creatures one would expect from a movie. They aren't the work of an expert, but they have a quality that dazzles me, except for a small detail, what's written next to them. This one has a story that begins with an inter-country religion war that somehow ends with an intergalactic war with vampires. Another is about magicians summoning spirits in a post-apocalyptic city. Their enemy seems to be gangster werewolves, also from space. This one stars a group of globe-trotting, demon-hunting mercenaries. The demons aren't from space this time, but hyperspace. This is giving me an aneurysm. Well, to me, they all sounds like they all sound like plots to anime. <laughs> the art's good, but the concepts not so much. There are too many cliches. I'm starting to wonder if they're all actually parodies. Maybe she's mocking me. Or maybe these are clues of some kind. While busy playing my detective skills to the test, I slip on something and lose my balance. Well, lo looking down, I find that the culprit is a common drawing pencil. I slipped on a pencil? That's weird. I saw her using this a minute ago. For her to drop it like that, she must have been in a pretty big hurry. Then I realized something. This happened to me at the pond too. I was talking out loud without noticing. She must have heard me while I was rambling behind the tree and I must have scared her. This must be why she ran away. Yeah, she has to be involved with that email business. <laughs> she ran away because I was about to catch her. Okay, okay. I can't let things end like this, right? We have unfinished business, my dear nameless artist. I don't know, this seems... I mean, is she the one responsible for, for email? She could just be a some poor girl who just wants to be alone while she's drawing things, and now you're some creepy weirdo talking behind a tree wanting to kidnap her. That's... It's a little weird. Well, more than weird, I guess. It's kind of illegal, but anyway. No. Wait, what am I doing? I mean, yeah, okay, maybe I, I just got caught up in all of the excitement. Let's just say that sometimes I get lost in thought and maybe lose control of myself. It's because of those kinds of situations that I'd rather take things slowly and consider my options first. When I decide to improvise, nothing good ever comes out of it. After leaving the play, uh, playground, I try to catch up with the mysterious girl before I lost sight of her while also trying to be careful as to not to let her see me. I couldn't just approach her with other people around. They might get the wrong idea if she goes on the defensive or accuses me or something. Finding the ideal moment it was essential, although I think my decision was bad since I decided to... hide inside a cardboard box. This is Nick. Operation. Blah. I don't know. What, do you, what, do you, what would you call this operation? Operation Figurine Retrieval Commencing Like in that one kid's game 
Every time she could make an unexpected movement, I'd stop and conceal myself under the best possible camouflage ever. 100% camo index. It was an easy task, considering my 35 years of experience as a triple agent for some of the most important spy agencies in the world. Well, no. To be honest, it was just an excuse to spy on someone while hiding inside a cardboard box. It was on my bucket list. My attentions were good, and that's all that matters, right? It was a pity that everyone kept pointing me out, though. It sure didn't help my stalking. What's their problem with people who like hiding in cardboard boxes? If it becomes a trend, you'll all come begging me to help. Still, I have to say that it was incredibly uncomfortable. It's a good thing that I'm the kind of person who follows his convictions through to the end, no matter what. By st staying well hidden, I was able to continue following my target. After changing streets, the target changed directions at an intersection and went down the street I knew well, since I usually take it out on my way to school. <laughs> are, you, are you really going to be doing this in pub- like in like- I don't know. Like in public. You might- mm, you might get some- uh, suspicious people uh, calling the cops on you, <laughs> Kieran. Anyway, it was hard to keep up with her the whole way. I'm not good at sports. In fact, I'd say I'm below average as far as profici proficiency is, is concerned. Not that it's easy to sprint while wearing a box. But that girl seemed to be competing for a 20 km power walking Olympic gold medal. Why was she in such a hurry? We passed by a flood of stairs, that would have been a good place to stop, take the stairs down and return home. I even lived nearby too. What a pity that my common sense was turned off or out of range, maybe the cardboard box stopped the connection from getting through. Finally we reached the apartment block, forcing me to leave my companion queue behind. I discreetly followed behind her and used my foot to catch the door before it slammed shut. Then I snuck into the lobby. Now I'm pretty sure this is illegal. In for a dime, in for a dollar. By then I probably lost sight of her of my objective. I ran up the stairway as quickly as I could while my target used the elevator and I found myself in front of the apartment she entered only moments ago. The pursuit should have ended there, but then she came out she came back out of her apartment. It took less than a minute for her to reappear, having left all of her art supplies inside. Luckily, I was hidden out of sight in the stairway. Imagine my surprise when she not only walked away, but also left her apartment doors ajar. The thing is, I've never been good when it comes to resisting temptation, so I took a small peek inside. I saw a single light on in one of, a, in one of the rooms. Leaving the apartment door open? Should never do that. But, uh, well, I guess, well, I guess we're not a thief. We're not, uh, well, assuming we're not gonna steal anything. But we are trespassing. That's no good. It's gonna get you in trouble if someone happens to pass by. Well, I guess if you close the door, I guess, you can, no one will notice. I don't know, whatever. That brings me to now. I'm shamelessly breaking into a girl's apartment. I was drawn to the light like a moth to a flame, seeing as the rest of her apartment was veiled in darkness. She definitely lives here. The walls are filled with pictures of her, her friends, and family. It's a bit messy overall, but my room is still worse. At least here I can actually see the floor. She even has some sports trophies on display. The closest thing to trophies you can have in my room is my figure, figure collection. First of all, I can't find any clues to the mystery. My package definitely isn't here and there isn't any evidence that she knows me somehow. I shrugged before deciding to leave, but not before returning the pencil I found at the playground and placing it on her desk. I figure it's the least I can do now. At first, I thought about leaving it with the rest of her art supplies, but I couldn't find them, so on the desk it goes. I make my way through the darkness and out of her apartment, quietly grumbling and wondering how I can be so unlucky. 
the front door is difficult to open, even using my full strength, because the frame is close to the door, making it resistant to movement, but carefully I managed to quietly open the door. Oops. Isn't it hilarious how easily I can just close the door again? Sweat is suddenly pouring down my body quicker and harder than any monsoon. She, the mysterious artist, is now standing on the other side of the door. Not that it's weird, considering this is her home. But why she come back so soon? Why is she in such a always in a hurry? Calm, calm down, Karen. C calm down. She's outside and she saw you, but it isn't the end of the world. Uh, I've got it. I can jump out through the window. It's only the top floor and I can fly away. Yes, just flap my wings and fly away. What am I saying? The adrenaline rush isn't letting me think clearly. My mind is foggy and it feels like my thoughts are at odds with each other. On one hand, there's a chance that she's the culprit of the ma ma malevolent email. If that's the case, then she won't think it's weird that I'm here and we can talk it through. On the other hand, she might not have anything to do with that and I'll look like I'm a common thief who sneaks into my victim's homes. I'll have to take everything into careful consideration. In some places, they'll take me out back and shoot me for being here. Oh, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Yes, an idea. It isn't a good one, but it's better than trying to fly away and that's good enough for me. Actually, I don't even know if it'll help me, but it's already too late. I have to try. I take a deep breath and release it, then brace myself to speak quickly enough that the artist won't have a chance to respond until I'm done. Hello in the name of freedom! Aha! This is the second floor, not third, right? You call me sure build weird houses. In America, we build real houses with real first floors, none of that ground floor crap. And why you gotta call it the ground floor anyway? It's a god of fucking proper floor, don't it? Who even calls it that? Speak American, why don't you? No hard feelings, right? I come in peace. Don't y'all worry, I'm from America, and America is the gospel of the new world. As long as you believe in freedom, so too will I believe in you. Everyone one is American at heart, hallelujah, praise Jesus. If you exist, America will come for y'all. Freedom is just like American hamburgers everywhere. Every man, woman, child, the world is in freedom, hating babies, Jesus, killing terrorists, roaring kebab, and feels the power of freedom is in her heart, and the child of America got above arms. Won't you all let your brother into your house? You cow, your castle, my castle, ain't what you got. Mexicans always say, ah, God bless this crunchy little girl, and God bless you. The girl, overwhelmed by my pseudo-patriotic spirit, takes a couple of steps backwards speechless. She doesn't scream, just asks who I am. I decide to really get into character and speak with the composure of a true American hero and the grace of one of the founding fathers of the Constitution. Remember my name, little girl, cause I'm only saying it once. The name's John... John Mackenzie. The lights suddenly go off and I opt to take the opportunity to run off to the stairway and flee like a hillbilly, <laughs> hillbilly is, is taking pot shots at me. I would love to say that the miracle was thanks to the soul of Benjamin Franklin summoned by my patri patriotism who then destroyed the electrical system. Sadly, that wasn't it. It was thanks to the automatic timer on the apartment that turns off the porch lights after several minutes to conserve energy. It wasn't part of the plan, but I ran with it anyway. Oh, so the lights turn off, and we run. What I'm focusing on right now is escaping as quickly as possible. I'm running out of time, after all. Soon the lights will turn on again, and... Thief! Ah! I knew it. I was supposed to be the good guy. How did it turn out like this? Why did I ever think pretending to be American was a good idea? At least I managed to get some distance, I guess. I'm cursing my bad luck when I hear the sound of the elevator moving. It must be that girl trying to catch me. I'm already bad at improvising, but I'm even worse under pressure. I stumble a couple of times on my way down the stairs. That's just the risk one takes when jumping down five steps at a time, though. 
how unfortunate that my fear became a reality. Right before I could sprint out of the building, the elevator arrives at the bottom. Oh. Well, I guess you took the elevator, but... And you took the stairs. Why didn't you just not, like, go all the way down? You could have, like, you know, hoodwinked her by not going to the bottom floor. In fact, just maybe waiting a few moments and slip by while she's searching for you on the ground floor. But maybe... Maybe that's a bad idea? I don't know. There's no other way to escape. The building is narrow and each floor only has an elevator, a set of stairs, and two apartments. I could try to push my way out, but I don't want an assault charge on me too, which would happen considering my awful luck. I had decided to run back up the flight of stairs when one of the apartment doors op uh, behind me opens, revealing one of its other residents. Oh, okay, so we're doing something similar. We're going back since we can't run out the front the front door. What was that scream just now? It came from upstairs. Is everything alright? While the distracted tenant goes up the stairs, I take the opportunity to sneak into his apartment before he returns. Mmm <laughs> trespassing again. Yes, I'm sneaking into another apartment. So what? Who even cares at this point? I've been having a brain fart for too long now, I can't think. After I enter the apartment, I push aside the curtains, concealing the glass doors in the balcony, and walk onto it. There doesn't seem to be anyone else in the apartment, and I can't come up with any other way to escape anyways. Shrouded by darkness, I search for some way to make my ex exit via the balcony. The apartment is only on the second floor, so I'm safe to jump down, but I prefer to just climb down using a lower floor's barred window. I make sure that the fall that the fall is less than three feet, then I'm out. Surprisingly, my escape went smoother than I expected. It was almost too easy. I can't believe it. I can't believe it as I caress my right leg. I expected to ache from the pressure of that jump. No, well, thankfully, everything seems fine. I'm totally unharmed. I stop wasting time and begin running, overjoyed the whole way home. Everything happened so fast. I try to convince myself that it was all just a bad dream and tomorrow I'll forget about it. For some reason though... Oops. I think I... I think I accidentally skipped... I get... Well, I keep skipping the last line of dialogue there. Okay, let me just save again. Do this thing where I... we. Oops. Ah, I skipped too fast. Let me try again. Ah, gotta remember to try again. I because guys, I skipped a line and I, I want to read it. Okay. Get chase. Okay. We escape. We jump off the building from a lower floor. Stop wasting my time, begin running, overjoy the whole way home. Everything happened so fast, I tried to convince myself that it was all a bad dream and tomorrow I'll forget about it. For some reason though, I can't stop laughing. Okay. I don't know, because there's a weird pause before the the, the text box finishes, or the, the text in the box finishes, I guess. I accidentally just click and then it skips it. Uh, I guess there, well, I guess there's like a little pencil icon, so I gotta look for that before I click on my mouse button. Anyway, all I, all I missed was I can't stop laughing. I guess he had a great time, maybe. Trespassing and all that. I don't know. <sighs> Just what I need. I'm tired and school isn't exactly my favorite place in the world. What is it even missing to become a real hell on earth? Ha ha ha, everyone's laughing. Or at least Ziva and Oz is. Wait, wait, give, us, give, give me a second. My sides hurt too much. So you decided to go to a playground and found a girl there. Oh, I guess we're regaling them of our story. Then you followed her around town while hiding inside a cardboard box, snuck into her apartment, then her, her room like some kind of pervert. Then she caught you, and you pretended to be an American... Finally, you ran away and snuck into someone else's apartment and then jumped off their balcony for whatever reason. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're laughing a lot. It's not like I wanted to tell Mr. and Mrs. Snoopy what happened yesterday, but they kept asking questions when they noticed I wasn't acting like myself. That's what you get from wild animals, they have good instincts. instincts. Seriously, I don't really have a problem letting people know about my life, I just always end up regretting it at the end of the day if those, if those two find out. I never learn. It's actually funny, Capanro. Capanro? Capanro! I assume it's like, uh, it's like, basically it means like buddy, right? Friend. Companion, I assume. That's what the word means. You're always complaining about how I seem like a foreigner because I mix languages and now you've pretended to be who? John something? Don't remind me. What a joke. My terrible accent only made it worse. No, the he. Uh, well, I couldn't tell, or rather, I I didn't realize there was some sort of American ac accent he was going for. I would have. Well, I don't know. Like accents, like what? Are you, what is an accent technically? It's like it's just a way of speaking, depending on where you come from. I don't know. For once, I envy your linguistic ability, but don't get used to it. Not really. I'm only confident about it because I've lived abroad, that's all. Let's just get to the point already, Kier. What's important to us, as men? That girl. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hot was she? Do, do you really believe I had the time to notice that? From your reaction, I'd say she was at least a solid 8. I decided not to answer that and instead raise an eyebrow. Hoping that it would be enough to deter us from pushing further. Sadly, I'm wrong. More than an 8 out of 10? Coming from someone so picky about real girls, she must look like an angel on earth. I can't wait to meet this sexy suver of troubled souls. It makes no sense to assume that there's any logic to Oz's crazy imagination. Luckily, the teacher finally comes into the room and instructs everyone to go to their seats. Based on the way Oz and Ziva say goodbye to me, I don't think they'll be leaving me alone today. The bell signaling, the start of recess, sounds like a celestial choir to my ears. Everyone shuffles out of the classroom in search of something to take a, to take a break. However, I know that my own freedom won't come as easily. The teacher calls out to me before I can leave. The old friendly literature teacher stands up and pulls me aside, ensuring that no one else can eavesdrop on our conversation. I politely ask him what he needs. I'm pretty surprised that he pulled me aside in the first place, actually. Well, it's about the last assignment you had in class. The creative writing piece. It didn't have an ending. Did you forget to include it? No wonder it took me by surprise, since I forgot all about that ex assignment, but my teacher looks even more astonished when I explain that he already had the entire story in his hands. His expectations drop down to earth and I watch him try to figure out whether or not to make me write a proper ending, a request he wouldn't hesitate making to any other student. I've, well, I've received special treatment for, for a while now, ever since I won a writing competition. But the funny thing is that I'd even plan on participating in the first place. Turns out someone decided to enter one of my stories under my name without my permission. From then on, everyone started to assume I'd become a famous writer or something, and their theory was only supported even more by my notebook writing habit. And it's not like I hate the idea or anything, and I don't care what the other people think of me. I just don't care about writing as much as everyone wants me to. Especially considering that I haven't won anything else since then. What else can I say? The ending doesn't seem... Doesn't seem finished, right? My teacher isn't confident about how he should react to my small interruption. He admits I'm right, but tries to soften the blow since it's not the first time we had ourselves in this kind of situation. I wouldn't put it like that. More like there's still some untapped potential. 
You know, the ending is like the opus magnum of every story. If it fails to meet the reader's, the reader's expectations, then... I find it fascinating that a literature teacher struggles to find the most political correct way to express himself. I only admire a man that respects his pupils so much. Still, sometimes, just sometimes, I wish everyone would stop placing me upon the pedestal. I don't deserve this kind of special treatment. Everything would be easier. Well, I don't know. As a, as a teacher, especially when you're a teacher talking to a youth, you do have to soften the blow. You know, otherwise, like the opposite, like the the extreme opposite would be just to berate you, right? And that would really suck. And that would like make you not right at all. So like, I don't know if you want, I guess you want that respect, I guess, to be criticized. You just say it, right? You just say that you want to be criticized. But anyway. Ah, Red and ending. My thoughts are still scattered when I walk into the hallway, which is empty aside from one infamous person. I've been waiting for you. How's my favorite guy? Ziva decides to hang out with me whether I like it or not and asks why it took me so long to come out. I brush it off as having to ask the question about the last assignment but she isn't convinced and keeps pestering me as, I, as we walk outside together. Do you want me to grab something to eat along the way? You can tell me all about it. Uh, all about your plans for Mysterious Girl X. Ah, uh, sounds good, but I'm not. Still not inviting you to anything. Who is Mysterious Girl X anyway? She sounds like a porn star. Don't don't play dumb. I'm talking about that girl you stalked yesterday. You still don't know if she sent you that email or not, so you should figure it out. And no, I won't ask you to invite me, although a real gentleman wouldn't mind paying for a lady's meal. I also always pays for my meals, for example. I do admire your ability to take advantage of others, but I can actually control my hormones well enough to take off that white knight armor. <laughs> Rude. Rude to us. Uh, but I guess it's deserved. Like, she makes it clear that she's not interested, so, you know. If you're paying for her meals, then I should be out of generosity, not because you want something out of her. Anyway. Not to mention that Oz is loaded, so it doesn't matter if he pays for anything. Why do you think I'm even his friend in the first place? Wow, double rude! The worst part is, coming from you, I believe it. While bickering, we reach a small sandwich shop that's popular amongst all of the students. We wait in line, slowly but surely approaching the window where she'll be a uh, will uh, will be able to place our orders. Well, forget about us for now. You still haven't answered me about that girl X. <sighs> Poor Oz, did he do something to make you angry again? You know what I meant. What are you gonna order? I suddenly want to know what weird tastes you have, Ziva. Don't change the subject. Talking to you is like a war where the smallest mistake can lead to a total annihilation. All warfare is based on deception, you should know that. I've already told you too much. The truth is that I'd rather not talk about this, else you might try to make it about psychology. You aren't my public enemy number two for nothing. Two? Who's the first? Anyone who picks Bulbasaur as a starter Pokemon. Hmm, Bulbasaur. Well, I, pick, I picked Squirtle, so... Why? He's super cute. No, no, wait. Stop changing the subject. There's one more thing I want to know about that girl, and then I'll leave you alone. Don't you have an ace up your sleeve, a plan to find out who she is? I tilt my head, deciding whether or not to answer Zebra's question, especially now she has reached, or she has just reached the top of my public enemy list. I can't come up with any reason not to tell her, so I shrug before spilling the beans. Uh, well, I won't do anything about it. Shouldn't have done anything in the first place. In fact, even if I wanted to, I can't do anything now. My hands are tied, you know? Nevertheless, I think that you probably want to do something about it. You're always overthinking everything, but you can't lie to me. 
You're just too embarrassed to admit it, but you don't need to pretend to be the tough guy around me, Edion. Ziva looks down at me, confident that I'm an open book to her. It's that smart ass attitude of hers that I hate about her the most. Earlier, you mentioned deception. Most people use it improperly. Do you know the difference between lying and deceiving? Ah, uh, don't start with that. This is just another psychoanalysis attempt, isn't it? No, oh, no, I swear it isn't. I'll stick to the linguistic part of it. That was a lie, but since I didn't fall for it, you could say that you failed to deceive me. Good enough for you, miss? <laughs> You could have skipped the cynicism, but yes, you're right. I wasn't lying though, you know? Well, that's for the judge to decide. Anyway, hurry and order something, it's your turn. Oh, I didn't notice. Ziva had been distracted and forgot all about the line. She quickly recovers and orders a vegetarian sandwich. The clerk tells us that we'll still have to wait a bit for our food, so Ziva and I continue our chat. Oh yeah, one of those veggie freaks. Vegan, the word is vegan. How's the herbivore lifestyle? Do you get extra points for starving yourself more? What prize comes after anem anemia? <laughs> My God. So rude, why is our character is so rude? Hilarious. First of all, you can still have a healthy diet without meat, for your information. Which is true, you can, you know, you can substitute protein. With other things. Anyway. Secondly, it isn't something I do for fun. I take animal rights extremely seriously. You could at least try eating vegetarian meals before you knock them. They aren't bad at all. The clerk brings Ziva's food to her, which means it's my turn to place an order now. I'll have... Well, I don't even know what you guys have. Eh, just stuff all the meat you can into a sandwich. Edian. Ah uh, yeah, sorry, that was really insensitive of me. Please. Ah, uh, that isn't what I meant. What? I asked politely. Oh, you meant you wanted a bite out of my sandwich. Sure, of course I'll share with you. I give up. You're clearly just trying to piss me off. Man, I care. Ah, uh, the protagonist is such an asshole. We leave the shop with our sandwiches in hand. While walking, I ask Ziva if we can stop and sit somewhere together. I exhaustedly plop onto a nearby bench, closing my eyes and relishing in the sweet respite. Respite or respite or respite? I think it's respite. Ziva looks annoyed and puffs her cheeks out when I look at her. She's not angry but somehow serious. This is what I meant by the difference between lies and deceit, Edian. You can lie all you want, but... Deceit always depends on how much the other person trusts you. There's no deceit without a lie, but there are lies without deceit. In this uh, situation, you're both the liar and the deceived. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're still craving a bite out of my sandwich. Too bad, girl, you already missed your chance. I already told you that I don't want it. It has nothing to do with it. How can I make you understand? Ziva folds her arms and wraps her brain. Think of a schizophrenic trying to describe reality. To do that, he would first have to lie to himself about what he's seeing, but he wouldn't be able to deceive himself about what his own reality is presenting. There's no use for him to distinguish between reality and delusion if, he, if what he feels is totally different, right? The tone our conversations usually have is gone. Starts feeling more and more like a lecture and that pisses me off because we only have 20 minutes off for our breaks. Time we should be spending forgetting about class. Did you come up with all that crap on your own or did you steal it from a book? It was me, I guess. It just came from to me. Did it sound weird? In short, stop interrupting me. Your behavior is nothing more than a clear-cut example of an internal conflict. There's nothing... Or there's something, uh, there's something rather than nothing. There's something you you like and feel attracted to, but the closer you get to it, the more negative points about it come to mind. So you want to run away on uh, or avoid it somehow. My point is that we won't know what's going to happen until it actually happens. 
That's why I think you should be brave and get on, get on with it. Between the email and the mysterious girl X, I'm positive that you want to know more about everything. Instead, you lie to yourself, believing the situation is just too stupid. The real question is, can you deceive yourself? If you can't, then you won't deceive me either. You aren't convincing anyone. I look at Ziva in disbelief as she continues bra proudly bragging about her own words. I've come to a conclusion. I was right when I first said that you were lying. You caught me. In any case, lies are too demonized in my opinion. Hmm? Ziva grins after processing what I just said. In response, I begin sweating, realizing that I probably just opened the Pandora's box. Thankfully, I'm saved by the bell as I notice cer a certain someone approaching us. Check it out. Compendo. Ziva, here you are. I was speaking with some girls from the other side when... Who's this guy? Huh? Me? What do you mean? It's almost like I know you from somewhere or something. Must have been the work of a witch. I think she chanted a spell, something like, forget about us. But who's us? Stop twisting my words, Idian. You know, that wasn't what I meant. Whatever, Oz. What were you saying before? It better be worthwhile. I lost you guys a while ago. I have no idea what you were talking about. Okay, back to what I was trying to say. Hmm, I forgot. I can't tell if you're only smart when you want to be or if your brain just doesn't have the capacity for it 24-7. That's exactly why I believed you when you said you're Oz's friends because of his money. Who wouldn't be? If you go to the other side again, then tell them to bring over your alter ego for a bit. It'd be convenient to have a competent Oz for once. Unfortunately, I suspect that this is the only Oz. Hmm. What'd you expect to get from interrupting me? The other side is our nickname for In Anatai Institute. Inate? In Inate Institute? It's down the street and directly opposite our school. It was even built from the same blueprint as our school. They probably reused the blueprint to save money. So they're completely the same. Mirrored buildings placed on the opposite sides. It's pretty close to here, a little more than 10 minutes walking. A lot of people wonder why they didn't just make one larger school instead of two smaller ones. It's uh, The funny thing about it is that since the buildings look identical, we joke about alternative versions of ourselves going to school there, like clones or doppelgangers. On, at the other side, students who have bad grades here are honor students. If someone's fat, then the clone is skinny. Stuff like that. It's an old joke now, but I still find it pretty funny. Oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. Do you remember that weird email Kier got? Ziva and I nod simultaneously. Oz then pulls out his cell phone and after playing around with it, shows us its screen. Is that another one? When he mentioned the email, I was already expecting this. And looking at the screen only confirms my fear. It's another weird email address to me, or rather, another weird email addressed to me. I'm Harry H. Here in Indian. Not for everybody. Can a lie become a reality? If you want to know the truth, go find it. This afternoon at the local sports center, join it. Good luck choosing your first action. Well, Ironically, we don't get to choose any actions in this kinetic novel. I stand there, wide-eyed and in disbelief. Alsi puts away his phone and scratches his head in confusion. Uh, do you remember how you used my phone to check your email the other day? Well, I forgot to log out of your account and my phone has been logged into it as since. To my surprise, uh, earlier today I opened an alert for a new email when it turns out that it was actually for you. And well, that's what I read. Again? What did I do to deserve this? 
What do you mean? This is perfect. This time I can go with you. I want to know what happens. Uh, me too. It's hysterical enough as a story. Imagine us getting to watch it live. What? No way. I'm not stupid enough to repeat the same mistake. Once bitten, twice shy. Aren't you curious? After what happened yesterday, we absolutely have to uncover the truth. And you said what happened yesterday was probably just a misunderstanding anyways. Whoever sent it is giving you a second chance. That's right. What happened to your depressing love story, eh? Aren't you gonna, are you gonna abandon it, abandon it now? That isn't a problem. What am I supposed to do? I don't even know what they mean by join it. Join what? I'm so excited to go there. Isn't there any way to convince you otherwise? Come on, Oz, help me. Even this, if it's with one of these crazy schemes of, your, of yours. Crazy schemes? I see, there's no other way. Oz clicks his tongue in disapproval and sharply gazes at me. I guess we'll have to settle this with a bet. A bet. It's said that every human being chronically suffers from at least one sin. I don't think I'm usually greedy, but that naturally inherent part of me always wakes up with one word. A bet. The thrill of gambling, the risk, the possibility of getting caught cheating and getting punished. Fortune is the vessel that brings men glory, excitement, the trophy of what has come to pass. And I'm prideful enough to always fulfill my promises and stick to my bets, no matter the cost or prize. Well, it's like, it's like rolling in a gotcha game. Gotta get that SSR! Everything I have in my wallet right now, wagered against you going to the sports center with us. I motion for Oz to show me what's in his wallet first. Inside, there's a reasonable, sizable prize, well worth the challenge. Alright Oz, I accept. However, following the proper rules for this kind of bet, I get to be the one who decides which game we'll play. Sure, I'm gonna win anyways. There's only one way to put to rest our ongoing rivalry. A game where you, the lowly commoner, dies in glorious battle against the eternal magnificent hero king. We'll end this with a sled desk race. A sled desk? No way. Uh, Alright. Sled desks is it. Blech. Sled desks it is. Let's do it. Um, care to explain what a sled desk race is? Um, this is why I've been training day and night for an opportunity like this. You'll regret it when I make you step down from your throne. Is anyone gonna answer me? My fear is akin to what a human would feel in the face of being stepped on by an ant. Since I chose the game, do you want to establish any extra rules? Hey, I'm, I'm still here. What's a sled desk? Next break, one on one, a race to the death. To the death, don't make me laugh. No more bets, the money's on the table and you can't drop out now. You know just how invincible I am when it comes to sled desks. The same goes for you, you might be surprised this time. We make our way back to our classrooms, bickering so offensively that sparks are flying at each other. Just like in the animes. Is anyone gonna tell me what a sled desk is? In the end, the one who has forgotten is me. Jeez. I have no idea, Ziva. After returning from our break and finishing a class I can't remember, the lesson of, we begin preparing for our sled desk race. Ziva, the self-proclaimed impartial judge, stands next to me while I tune up my sled desk. I wanted to believe that your sled desks were a little more original than desks being used as sleds. Seriously, it's a freaking race on top of desks. Will Austin you ever grow up or what? Ah, you don't get it, do you? 
Sled Death represents the inner flame that burns inside of every man, a tool used to awaken our inner beasts. You can't understand it because you lack the testosterone. The testosterone. Right, more like patience. So are you guys gonna race in the hallway? It's kinda narrow for that. Besides, you really think your desk was like it like sleds? Even if you get rid of the rubber on your legs, or on the legs, I don't think though. And it's obvious how new you are. You're just lucky to see a live sled desk grace today. I don't know why we haven't done any of this year the year before. Or any any bleh. We haven't done any this year before today. Okay. You see, the hallway is positioned at a downward angle, although it can be difficult to notice. When we discover that, we realize that here is perfect for racing on top of our of pretty much anything. We agree that desks were our best option for racing. That was how sled desk races were born, an important milestone for the future generations. I, I put tacks over the rubber on the legs of my desk so I can slide even farther too. I gently kick one of the desks to show Ziva how far I can go. Thanks to the tack modifications, it slides across the floor and reaches the classroom door effortlessly. The winner is the one whose desk goes the farthest distance and only one push. I see. I'm not really convinced though. These races here have to end pretty quickly. The desks don't slide for more than 10 seconds. And that's exactly how long a race should be. It isn't like our breaks are all that long either. And then what's the fun part? You still don't get it? You'll see if you watch. The sled desk can awaken a man's inner strength, which can warp even time and space. Pay attention. Whatever. <laughs> Ziva is not... She is not amused. Are you ready to lose? Lose? Is that not one of your foreign expressions? I don't know what he means. I fear I have to teach you then, Capandro. Desk versus desk in a narrow hallway. There's barely enough space for us to stand around. The more, the most important part of each sled desk race is the beginning. The con contestant with the best initial push will probably be the winner. There are also other obstacles in the way, making it pretty difficult to overtake your fellow racer once he's past you, but you never know in a race to the death. There's no set rules, anything goes. The other contestant can try to mess up his opponent at any moment by any means. That's why sled desk races are taken so seriously. You get pretty hurt, so only the bravest students can compete. Austin and I are the only ones who participate in these races now that I think about it. I wonder why. You're the only people who would do something stupid like this, Karen. Anyway. As judge, I'll give the starting signal and act as the commentator. Not that I think there's gonna be much to say. I mean, are you guys ready to go? Start whenever. The only thing you need to ready are your lips, mi amor, since I'll take a kiss from you as my prize when I win. I'm going to ignore that. We're starting in three, two, one. Go! Wah! Uh, uh, yelling. The race begins with a strong first push from both competitors. Their timing was in sync, both of them clearly taking into account how important the beginning of the race is. It's a perfect start. But what's this? Us is in the lead. Ha! How does it feel to be eating my dust back there for once? Impossible! Bacana! How can you be possibly be faster than me? I was sure of that. You were sure that I wasn't using tax, right? After every race, I'd wonder how Kyo was so fast. Cure, Kyo, uh, Kyo, Kyo, Kieran, yeah, Kieran. Anyway, defeat after defeat, my desk would always stop short, while yours always seemed to fly past mine. I studied mechanics and engineering to figure out what could have happened. And then, I had an epiphany. You were using tacks to reduce the friction with a tack covering each leg. Your desk was that much faster than mine. 
When I found out, I decided against telling you so that next time I catch you off guard and I could use that to my advantage. Uh -oh. oh, oops. Oh. I guess I touched the mouse wheel. I can go like reverse. I didn't know that. I guess oh, that's useful to know actually. If I can go back, you know, I didn't have to like reload and skip to the part where I accidentally skipped over uh, dialogue or anything. I can just like use the mouse wheel. I didn't know that. Hmm. What engine does this uh, kinetic novel uses? I'm not familiar with that. So maybe that's why I didn't know. Well, anyway. Uh, I catch you off guard unless I'm using my badge. Who's the smart one now? You've done all those races against him without ever, know ever knowing that? I noticed as soon as I saw his desk. Why do you think I accepted this bet? I'm not the champion because I'm good. It's because he's stupid. D don't spoil my glorious moment. In any case, that still doesn't make sense. We started at the same time, the same push, so how Oscar in the lead? What's going on? When the distance between the two of us widens, I notice a shimmering trail. Oscar's desk is leaving behind a trail of some sort of liquid. That's... Oil! Oscar's desk legs are covered in oil. That's why his desk is faster. I wasn't satisfied with just being on even ground. I looked for more methods to improve my speed. And this was the result of my hard work. Maybe... Maybe Oz isn't as dumb as he seems after all. I also drew some flames on the desk to improve his acceleration. In movies, the flaming cars are always the fastest, so it has to be legit. Legit. I take that back. While Oz is distracted, I begin my all-out attack. I toss everything out of my pencil case. Pens, pencils, scissors, a pencil sharpener, and an eraser that looks like a pig. And even some of those fake chocolate coins that's so ancient, so ancient that their currency stopped existing more than a century ago. They fly through the air towards Oz's unsuspecting sled desk. If I'm lucky and something hits it, his desk might slide backwards, awarding me victory. But it's not that simple. No way! Partially cloudy, with an 82% chance of relative humidity and low pressure fronts. Nani? And an over 60% chance of rain during the day. So I brought... An umbrella! Oz using the, his umbrella to defend against the incoming attack. Now Edin has nothing left to throw. Time stands still for me. Zawarudo. <laughs> Not because of my incoming premonition of my defeat or the amazing fact that Oz can memorize daily meteorological data so precisely, but uh, for the pain I feel after losing a friend. He who once walked the same path as I is now standing at the crossroads, facing another direction. He is unreachable, and even though I thought he was stupid, he's silently leaving me behind. Probably because he's too good for me. My dearest pig eraser. I watch as it bounces off the umbrella, jumps past the hallway, and into the abyss, forever lost to me. To tell you the truth, I had found it on the floor a couple days ago, so I really had probably just stolen it from some un unlucky fool. Our time together was so short that I didn't even, even remember that I had it in my pencil case until now. Still, it was the most powerful and touching relationship I've ever had with an eraser. The top 10 anime deaths. Farewell, my old friend. Vendetta! Edion's getting ground. How is this possible? He's, he's using his opponent's oil trail to lose friction and speed up. Between the oil and Oz's umbrella temporarily slowing him down, Edgen is about to catch up. If he tackles him, he might. Not so fast. I still have one more trick up my sleeve. Oz took something out of his umbrella. He has, he has a ruler. Oh no. But it's not just any ruler, it's a meter stick. That's like one meter. Where'd they get that from? You know what I'm about going to, uh, what I'm gonna do now, right? Checkmate. Capanro. Shit. 
us flung the meter stick in Edlin's path. It's like a landmine. It's impossible for you to avoid it, Edlin. At this speed, it can only end in catastrophe. Jump, Edlin. Save yourself. It isn't worth it. I can't. I can't give up now. I promised that I'd never forget. I can't let... I can't let my pencil sharpener's sacrifice be in vain. No, wait, wait. It was, it was, a, a, the, it was the racer. Right, an eraser. Not really sure whether it was an eraser or the sharpener, whatever it was that I cared about. My desk collides with the ruler. The back legs of my desk fly upwards, flip by the inertia, and instant later, the front, the front legs follow suit. I'm about to fall. Nevertheless, what the? It's the sound of an angel. Yes, I can hear it. The angels singing, giving me their blessings. A hallucination or maybe a revelation. Anyway, it's here. I can see the heroes of old sled, sled desk races standing next to my eraser, telling me that I shouldn't give up yet. Thanks, everyone. It wasn't necessary. With my newfound divine strength, I managed to flip my desk further to the point that it's now totally upside down. And from here... Go! Ike! I hold the desk legs while I stand on the other side of the table as if it's a skateboard. Amazing. I grind my way onto the banister and manage to overtake Oz. I jump and with a hard flip, I make the desk return to its original position, allowing me to successfully continue the race. At last, I'm in the lead. How did he do that? And now Oz's desk is grinding against mine. The two rival desks rub against each other, creating small sparks of fire and indents in the wood paneling. The end of the track is coming up, but Oz and I know there's something we have to do. You surprised me, Capandro. I won't deny it. But it isn't over yet. We're going to settle this with our bare hands. Two men in motion on a battlefield. We both stand on our desks, accompanied by the hellish squeal coming from the friction between them. No words are necessary. Dialogue won't accomplish anything. It is now with our fists that one of us will fall and the other will grasp victory. Jump, quickly. But uh, Ziva's sudden warning make us come back to reality. Haven't we, haven't we been sliding for too long anyways? I mean, it's true that everything seems to slow down There's when there's this much tension, but this is a bit too much. And accounting for the oil, it makes sense that we're farther than usual. This, well, this isn't good though, because at the end of the hallway, there's... The stairs! Ouch. 